Docker containers can be used to quickly and easily provide certain web services. For example, your own private cloud, the smart home, your own mail server, a password manager and much more. In this video, I show how to set up a Linux server to run Docker containers. Hello, and welcome, of course also to my website libe.net. To run Docker containers, you can use any PC or server running Windows or, ideally, Linux as the operating system. Even though Docker can be installed on a Raspberry Pi, I would still recommend hardware with AX86-64 architecture since most containers are deployed for it. Since Docker uses the Linux kernel as a base, containers can be run with a Linux distribution, such as Debian or Ubuntu, with less overhead. Installation can be done via a USB buttstick or by using a setup DVD. In both cases, the ISO file is needed for setup. I downloaded the ISO file for the Ubuntu setup in advance from the official Ubuntu site. As an alternative to burning it to a DVD, I use an empty USB stick and write to it using Rufus. Inserted in a mini PC, it starts the setup from the USB stick after selecting the boot device. The setup guides us through the installation. After the country and keyboard settings, I choose Ubuntu server and would have the option to adjust the network settings afterwards. After an access test to the package sources, the dialog for the selection of the disk appears. By default, the entire disk is overwritten, so make sure that there is no relevant data on the disk, these cannot be restored later. For a later login the user data and the server name are still needed and if the login over the network should be possible the installation of the OpenSSH server. For running a single server, we can skip the snaps for Kubernetes. For simplicity, I'll select the snap version of Docker here. Alternatively, Docker could be installed afterwards via Docker's official package sources. After installing the operating system, the snap version of Docker is ready to go. For demonstration purposes, I launch a test container. The naming scheme for the containers is vendor slash container name. In the example, Docker is the vendor. Docker slash getting started loads the getting started container from the Docker registry. The Docker registry is a kind of online library and allows you to download and launch a container just by specifying its unique name. The getting started container loads a web server with information about Docker. Invoked in a browser and the port specified in the command, the help pages are provided by the Docker web service that was just launched. To be able to run the commands without a root account, Docker can be given the right to start with set ACL. This allows the containers to be started without sudo. If a service needs multiple containers, they can be described in a Docker Compose YAML file. As an example, if a web service needs a database, I demonstrate starting two containers here again with the getting started container. This time I connect to the server over the network from another computer using the putty ssh client. To create the docker compose file, I use the command line editor vi. In the text file, 
the two services are stored accordingly. The parameters are similar to the parameters of the docker ran command used before. If the docker compose up command is now called from the folder in which we created the text file, it will be interpreted and the deposited services will be started. If you prefer to manage Docker via a web interface, you should take a look at the Docker container named Portainer. The container can first be started via a command in the terminal, similar to the previous example. For the access to work, we need to pass the network port 9000 as a parameter. To access the local Docker installation, I pass Dockersock as a drive. I also redirect the data folder to our server's local drive, which ensures that Portainer settings are not lost during an update. After container startup, the web interface can be accessed with the server's IP address and port 9000. I assign a password and select the local environment in the interface, which allows me to manage existing containers or create new containers. For more details and additional articles visit my website libe.net, subscribe to this channel for more and leave me a thumb. Thanks a lot and see you next time.